Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of the 3D printed drone project. Now, if you missed the last episode when we were built this frame, uh, make sure you go back and check that out because uh, you'll find out a lot about this, how it was made and uh, how much it weighs and that sort of thing. But this episode we're going to be focusing on the electronics and we're going to start building the drone. So, in front of me here I've got all of the electronics that are going to be going into this thing. Um, I got all of these online and I tried to keep it as cheap as possible and I also tried to make the parts as sort of future-proof as possible so I won't need to upgrade too much in the future and um, also tried to make it so that it didn't perform like crap so that it does actually perform quite well even though it's relatively cheap. So that's the sort of thing that I've been aiming for and in front of me you'll see what's going into it. So uh, at the heart of the drone we've got the Naze 32 flight controller. Uh, this is a very, very cheap flight controller, it's a very small flight controller, but um, it's tried and tested and it's got a lot of features and it packs a lot of, a lot of bang for its buck. It, it's, it's quite a versatile piece of equipment. So this is what's going to be controlling, this has got the accelerometers and the gyros and stuff on it that will be controlling the four motors and making sure that the quad stays flying upright and keeps flying forwards. Moving on out, we've got the uh, ESCs here, the speed controllers. Uh, I got four um, little B 20 amp ESCs, they're opto ESCs, so they've not got a battery eliminator circuit, which makes them very, very cheap, but also means that I've got to, to deal with uh, not having a battery eliminator circuit, so I've got to power the flight controller somehow. Um, and I've solved that, I've got four of these, and I've solved that by this, which is the Matic system um, power distribution board with 12 volt and 5 volt battery eliminator circuits built in. Now, this piece of kit is great, it's really, really small, which is nice because it fits in the quad and uh, it, it fits in the, the sort of standard mounting plate. I didn't have to modify the, the bottom of this drone at all. Um, I just printed it how it was, and that's designed for an even smaller battery, um, power distribution board. But this thing, it's got the two BECs built into it, as you can see, and it's got all of the contact points you'd ever need. Um, there's some bits on here that I'm not actually going to be using, such as it's got a video pass-through for the um, for the video transmitter and the, the camera. Um, so basically the video can go from the camera to the VTX. Um, through this board, but I'm not going to be using that instead. I'm going to be using the default wiring harness and just wire this harness into um, the battery eliminator circuit on this um, power distribution board. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, um, all will become clear later. But for now, um, all you need to know is this is what the, the, uh, the battery's power goes into and it will distribute it to the, the ESCs which will then give it to the motors and it will also give it to the everything else that needs powering basically. Then we get to the motors. These are Letudar motors. They're very, very cheap motors, but supposedly they perform quite well. Um, apparently they're built in a factory that makes some of the motors that happen to be good, and they're basically just rebadged versions. They're 2204 motors, they're 2300 kV. Um, should provide a decent amount of thrust um, with not too big of an ampage draw, I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, I got a set of four of them, and they actually, all four of the motors and all four of the ESCs I got together um, from eBay, from a Chinese seller. So they might be fake, um, I'm not sure, it's a risk I'm willing to take, and if, if anything breaks, I'll replace it with a genuine part. So that, it's just sort of um, as cheap as possible initially, and then later on, when I can afford it, I will upgrade and, uh, and hopefully keep this thing flying. Um, so yeah, I've got two of the clockwise and two of the counterclockwise motors, I'm not sure which way around they are, but I'll find out eventually. Um, and the motor direction can be reversed either by the wiring, although I'm not going to bother with that, or by the, uh, the Naze 32 here. So, um, I'm going to be running clean flight on the Naze, by the way, I forgot to mention that. Um, now, for the camera side of things, um, I got this, which is, it was on sale at the time, it's an Esheen uh, sort of ready-to-go FPV setup, and uh, it's called the, what is it, the... ET600 VTX with the V700 TVL camera. So basically what this is is a an all-in-one setup. So you've got your VTX, your video transmitter, and you've got your camera all here together. And, uh, and you've got a pre-made wiring harness for it as well. Which is in here as well. Um, so all of this basically hooks up together. And the good thing about this is the VTX actually powers the camera. So I could power the camera separately, but I'm not going to bother when this thing... It, it runs um, from 7 volts to 23 volts, I believe. Um, so it runs off of a balance plug for a LiPo. But I'm going to be cutting this and putting it straight into the power distribution board, uh, where it can get 12 volts from there. Um, by the way, the motors and the ESCs are both rated for 4S as well as 3S. I'm going to be running on a 3S setup at first, but later on I might switch over and I might start running a 4S setup, so I want to be ready for that too. So. 
All of this sort of comes together and uh, you do get a pretty crappy standard aerial with it, but I'm going to be using, instead I've got these two circular polarised um, cloverleaf antenna. And then I've just got this pigtail with a bulkhead connector to just make sure that I don't snap anything off of the BTX if I crash into the ground. Um, so that's the main majority of the electronics that are going to be going into this thing. Um, I don't really want to go into much more detail than that because this video is already getting pretty long and it's just me rambling on about stuff. But without further ado, let's get into building this thing. So I'm going to start out working with the motors. Um, I'm going to get them all mounted up. They come with uh, these little sort of spinners and uh, they need to be actually screwed onto the motor as you can see. There's no, there's no place for a prop to mount onto this thing. So um, it basically takes four Phillips head screws and you have to screw each of these onto the motor. So I'm going to do that. Right, so now that I've got the motors prepped, I've cut down some M3 bolts, uh, and these will go onto the arms of the frame. At the minute most of the arms are attached, I have to take one off to size these nuts off. These are six millimeters long. I've sized them so that they won't uh, won't drive into the actual coils of the motor, and uh, been very careful about that. So uh, <laughs> they just hop onto the arm like this, and they fit perfectly, which is really nice. And uh, should be fairly easy to mount up, so I'm going to do that now. Right, so now that we've got our motors all prepped, uh, we need to work out how long these wires are going to be, how long we're going to keep them. So uh, for that, I'm going to actually mount up the power distribution board. I need to work out which way around I want this to go. Um, I think I want it so that the battery connections come out of the back of it. So probably like that. So I just had to sort of get that formulated in my head a little bit. And uh, now that I've got this sort of clear what we're going to do in my head, I'm going to start tinning things, so I need to switch my soldering iron on. Right, so now that these pads are all tinned, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solder up the wire for the battery. So I've got some 12 gauge wire here, and uh, we're going to be using this, we're going to solder up the XT60 connector for the battery, and, uh, and then we're going to uh, work out how long it needs to be, and solder it onto here. So now I've got loads of these little JST connectors, I'm going to be hooking these up, this is what's going to be used to, to power things, so um, we need one that's going to go into, on our NAS32, um, we're going to have the battery voltage being red and we're also going to have a buzzer to tell us when our battery is low. So we need two of these JST connectors soldered, one, two, soldered onto the board. These you can get as pairs, that's what I've done, I've bought loads of pairs of these. Um, I've got a pack of 10 or so for next to nothing from China. I'm going to solder one on to power the camera and I'm going to solder one on to provide our NAS32 with the battery voltage. So let's do that now. So that is the power distribution board now done. It looks like a sort of a demented guy. It looks like somebody from Don't Hold Me, I'm Scared or something. But um, either way, that's that done for now. I'm gonna put that to the side and uh, we're gonna now work on the, the nade. Right, so we've got our nades prepped now. Um, I'm gonna move back to the power distribution board and get this completely done now. So we need to size up how long the wires are going to be. Right, so that is all of our ESCs connected. That looks like a bit of a mess, doesn't it? Um, all that's left now is to hook up the uh, 
motors to these things and then plug everything in and it should be pretty much good to go. Right, I think we're finally ready to start assembling this thing. So, we're going to start off with the bottom plate. And the way that this thing goes together is... Uh, I'm going to put the power distribution board on, the for on there first. Um, so I'm trying to do this without messing up what I've got laid on this mat. Too badly. Yeah, so power distribution board goes on here first. Right, so that's all good, so now we're going to grab some zip ties here and uh, we're going to zip tie down the ESCs. Now we need the next layer, which is hiding over here somewhere. Um, this is going to sit down on top of it here, but we need to pass up all the cables we need. Right, so now that that layer is sort of semi-secured, uh, we're going to go through and we're going to stick the pins in for the pivot of the motors. Right, so that is uh, what they call in the business the lower section, the base section, and uh, that is now completely done. What we need to do now is get those vibration dampening balls where it over here that we didn't have last video that are actually a lot smaller than I expected um, and these will go into the holes in the plate here right so this is the this is the clean section um, before we start attaching this to the the rest of the quad we actually need to build the mount for the for the nase. So at this point we're pretty much done, all we've got to do is plug everything up and, uh, and we're good to go and uh, screw on the top plate of course. So that's what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, pass through the wires that need to go to the places they need to be. Right so that is all of the wires ran up into the clean section of the drone. Uh, all that needs to be done now is that it ought to be plugged in and put together. And uh, this top plate screwed down, the vibration dampening balls popped into place, um, but I'm running out of battery very quickly, so the finished drone will look very much like that. I've not yet added the FPV gear, uh, that's to come later, and uh, I will do a separate video when we do that, because this has taken way too long. But yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Any glaring errors, make sure you, <laughs> you point it out down in the comment section below. Uh, but apart from that, that's all I've got time for, and that's all I've got space for on my SD card, unfortunately. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, and let me know what you thought in the comments. And I'll catch you all in the next video.